I wear this hat. It's the dad. I can't stop wearing the hat. Dad, I'm the dad of the Westchester University. My daughter bought this hat for me in her orientation uh, the summer before she started college. She's a miracle daughter. She was born 010101, the first day of the new millennium. She was born smiling. The nurse said to me, take out your disposable camera now. I've been a nurse here at the hospital maternity for 27 years. I know the difference between gas and a baby who's born smiling. Your daughter is smiling. And I snapped, I snapped the first photo of many. <laughs> it's hard to not be emotional during this speech. Shoba. Becoming a father was the first time I ever really felt normal in my life. I'd had a lot of challenges in my life. And that was the first time becoming a father to Lizzie was the first time I ever truly felt as what I would perceive to be normal in life. I coached her, went on to coach basketball. Uh, she, she won the winning shot. She shot the winning shot in triple overtime. And grade in the fourth grade, when I was coaching, I went on to coach softball. I felt normal. I watched her swim in all the competitions. I felt normal around all the other parents. I was a father to a beautiful daughter. Uh, when she was seven years old, I was diagnosed with uh, kidney damage. Uh, I, she was never really aware or she would be too young to know about that. But my own health journey in trying to to stabilize myself sort of became her health journey as well as she had become a little chubby growing up. And so we shared this common goal of being healthy and swimming together. One summer we swam 43 days in a row at the YMCA, at local pools. It was, we were in it together. We were best friends, best buddies. We did everything together, we went to sporting events together. We spent a lot of time together. In 2017, I started dialysis. I'd had a vision uh, to move to Pennsylvania. I must say that my journey through life with Lizzie and her being the miracle in my life before that, every major decision I made, miracle type decisions revolved around her, the center of it. I wanted to go back and mention that when she was born, my wife had cardiac issues. So I was alone with her and I spent a lot of time bonding with her while my wife recovered from uh, cardiac problems after she had a C-section. So in, in effect, I did spend a lot of time with her, but also I was inspired the first time I held her literally that I should do more in life. I should do more. What can I do to do more? I was a school teacher. And I decided to take a leave of absence from my job as a school teacher to start a speaker's bureau called A Vision in Motion. I had this vision. I had this amazing daughter. I should do more. And so I started connecting with motivational, inspirational presenters, many with disabilities, to help them to share their stories. It wasn't an accident. I'd had a very difficult life as a teenager. I'd had a nervous breakdown at age 17. And I wanted to create this super power team to make my daughter's world a little bit better place to try to help the world be a little bit better. Even if I could just make it a little bit better beyond just being a teacher in a classroom. So I had to go back and, and tell you that. And that became the next 20 something years of my life, her experiencing life through meeting all of these inspirational people and coming to programs with me, experiencing this and not realizing until later that it really made an impact on her personally. Then I'm diagnosed with the kidney damage. Eventually, I had another vision to move to Pennsylvania. <laughs> My wife did not really have uh, much uh, uh, kind of part of that other than hearing me come home one night and saying we should move to Pennsylvania. And we moved to a town called Nazareth. And she started high school at a great high school, public high school. And my, uh, my wife remained uh, living in New Jersey because she had a great job with medical benefits. And so again, we were alone together. My daughter and I living together in a home, only seeing 
uh, my wife on weekends. And two years later, I started dialysis in 2017. And my daughter became the light at the end of my tunnel. And I was literally living so that I could experience more with her. To be the father, to be that was my best, my best job, my best title in life was dad. So if that's my best title, I have to live, right? And I made it to 33 months on dialysis and got a call that I had an anonymous living kidney donor. And I received a transplant on December 5th, 2019. And I was able to not only live, but to see her graduate college, not on dialysis. She is the miracle of my life. One more miracle, there are many, but I'll just share here with the time I have left, is that while I was still on dialysis in her first semester of college, she called me to tell me she saw a sign about a birthright trip. If one of your parents is Jewish, you can go one time, all expense paid to Israel for a two-week trip. She saw the sign. She went just days after my transplant in December 2019. And she came back and said it was life-changing. She joined up with the Hillel Club. She had been raised in a Roman Catholic church and eventually became president of a Hillel of 17,000 students, the largest student-run club on campus, bringing me back to my heritage. She's a miracle. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Jay. That was so inspirational. As always, we love your your speeches. They just bring just so much emotion. Um, and again, I'm hoping your daughter can listen this to this recording back uh, to know what an impact you um, that she um, she's had on you. That's amazing. A great tribute on this Father's Day. So thank you for sharing that story. And 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 your I look forward to many more of your speeches as you have many stories to tell us. So thank you again for. Again, another amazing speech. So just